guys. Happy Sunday. It is great to see all of you. It's the end of our month. It's yeah. been such an awesome month here at KVTV. Totally. Yes. Our, yeah, our preschoolers, you guys, are continuing to learn about love. It's all about love this month. And um, we are learning that Jesus loves us no matter what. In our story this week, we're going to learn about a woman who was expressing great thanks because Jesus loved her no matter what. And she be really believed it to be true. And you should believe it to be true also because Jesus loves you no matter what. There's nothing that you could ever do. Nothing will ever change that. And I want you guys to all know that you were all made for his love, okay? Yes. And we are continuing to learn our memory verse with stand up and do it with me, you guys, okay? Because we have to do a spin. Yeah. All right. A friend loves at all times. Proverbs 17, 17. Yes. Right. So good. Good job, you guys. Yeah, great. And I am a super fan of yeah. what our K through fifth has been learning about this month. And we all this month we've been talking about kindness. And kindness is showing <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> Uh, showing others that they are valuable by how you treat them. And so um, it's just all about treating others with love and respect and that and showing them that everyone is valuable. Just like Amanda said, we're all made for God's love mm -hmm. and we want to treat others like that. Mm -hmm. So um, isn't that so cool? Yeah. Like we're all made in the image of God. And yeah. I just love that. Yeah. So... Um, we're going to hear about more about kindness in our story, but first we thought that it would be kind of fun to see what kind of super fans you are with a little trivia game. Oh, cool. So, awesome. I like games. Okay. This one is called Real or Fake, okay. and it's sports edition. Oh, boy. So we're going to find out. They're going to name some sports up here, and we're okay. going to find out if they're real sports or if they're fake, if they're made up. Oh, boy. So. All right. We're going to see how well you guys know your real and fake sports. Yes. We'll see. All right. Kay. Let's go to the first one. Shin kicking. Ooh, <laughs> I, hope, I hope that's a real fake. Sport. Ouch. <laughs> Competitors try to make their opponent fall down on his knees by kicking him in the shin. That sounds so painful. <laughs> I know. You guys. Ouch. I hope, Ow, that's I hope false. it's fake. Yeah, fake. Oh, it's real. It's real. Don't, Look do, at those don't guys. do that at home. Don't yeah. go do that to your brother or no. sister. Let's not do that sport. <laughs> China doll drop. Aspiring engineers create custom China dolls with specifically engineered carrying cases. Ooh. The cases are then dropped from varying heights to test the effectiveness of the protective case. I, I Oh man. I mean it's I don't know. It sounds as a sport. Like a sport though? I'm not sure. Oh, it's fake. No. Nope. It's fake. Not Kay. real. <laughs> Good. We're not just going around breaking China dolls. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh boy. Wife carrying. <laughs> A Finnish sport where a man carries his wife or the wife of a friend on his back and races through a specially designed obstacle course. Okay. I mean, that sounds well, like it could sure. be real. I think it could yeah, be. Yeah, carrying someone on your back legit. and running. Let's see. Let's see. It's real. It is. It's a real. Oh, yep. <laughs> see? Wow. That's strong. Funny. Nice. <laughs> okay. Broom vault. Just like pole vaulting, but with brooms. I'm not sure how that would work. You guys know work. what pole vaulting is? You know, you where you take the pole and you jump and you try and jump over another pole? Oh, boy. Let's see. Oh, uh, no. Nope. fake. Not real. Okay. Yeah. I could see that, that being difficult. I know. That would be really hard. Yeah. <laughs> chess boxing. Competitors play a round of chess and then box each other. That's uh, interesting. It's no. very interesting, but uh, is it real? Let's I see. I don't know. <laughs> it's real. Oh, look. How okay. funny. Who knew? Wow. That's Crazy. something new I've that I learned. I've never seen that before. All <laughs> no? right. Fizzball. Cans of carbonated beverages are shaken and then placed on a wooden tee. Competitors then strike the cans with bats in an effort to hit the can the farthest. <laughs> sort of like baseball, but with fizzy cans. Oh, I mean, my gosh. Sounds messy. Yeah. <laughs> Is it real yeah, or fake? Oh, fake. No. Kay. Somebody made it up. Yeah. They Great. got creative with that one. They did. Extreme catch. Competitors race to be the first to catch a fish, fillet it, and then prepare a meal with their catch. 
Competitors are judged on the speed, filet quality, and taste of their dish. Wow. I kind of that's, like this sport. I, know. <laughs> I think I hope it's a real sport. I know that's pretty amazing. I like it. I like this idea. I'm going yeah. with real. Oh, oh man. it's not. Fake. Well, we should we should create it. Yeah, we, we could just, just do make it. it up. I'm not good at filleting fish though. So uh, no, me neither. <laughs> nope. Mountain bike bog snorkeling. An aquatic race where someone with a snorkel pedals a mountain bike through a swamp. That sounds really hard. It does sound really hard, <laughs> but I could see it being snorkeling. Oh, I know, my snorkeling goodness. Snorkeling and biking at the same time? I, I don't know. What but, do you guys think? Oh, it's, it's real. real. <laughs> Look at He has a snorkel. Wow. Oh, my goodness. This is crazy. I know. Man, people do crazy <laughs> things. People do. Yeah. Camel wrestling. <laughs> Similar to bull riding, competitors must sit astride a saddle, a saddle, oh, Saddle-less. a saddleless male no, yeah. camel nope. as they guide it around a series of dangerous obstacles without falling off. Wow, this sounds uh, hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> it does sound hilarious. Uh, Is it real? Fake. Nope. Kay. It's fake. Okay. Well, that that was our last one. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. How did you guys? Do? Yeah. How did you guys do on those? Those were. Some pretty creative. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> all right. Well, today we have our last cheer video. Yeah. We've been showing these all month long just as a way of encouragement. And so let's check out this week's cheer video. K-I-N-D. That's the way we want to be. When we work and when we play, we'll be kind every day. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys, it's cool to be kind, so go out there and be kind to one another. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. Bye, you guys.
don't look like me, don't act like me, don't don't even think a thought like me, but you matter to me definitely. Definitely, it don't matter, cause you matter. Hold on, right there. Come on. Yes. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Woo! It's Brandon. You're amazing, man. How do you do it? You're the best host in the world. Brandon's number one. Brandon's number one. Oh, woohoo! Brandon, you're the best. What's happening? Oh. What? what is all this? It's your biggest fan. Well, that's not supposed. No! No! Turn it off! Brandon, turn it off! Um. <laughs> These things are dangerous. No capes. Hello, everyone. I'm Brandon. And I'm uh, John. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> welcome to the So and So Show. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. John, do you want to tell everybody why you're um, so excited? Can I? Oh, please. That's why we're here. Okay. Well, as you can see, I'm dressed as my favorite comic book character, Radiation Rabbit. And, and why, pray tell, do you love Radiation Rabbit? What's not to love? It, it, it's an incredible origin story. Okay. Nuclear physicist Dr. Jack Velveteen sacrifices himself by shutting off a nuclear reactor manually and finds himself exposed to excessive amounts of radiation along with a stray bunny that has wandered into the reactor room with him. That sounds plausible. I know! So, so everyone assumes he's dead, but then he emerges and seems to be normal except for an insatiable appetite for carrots and justice. <laughs> Oh, the radiation made him part bunny. Yes, you've read it. No one has a lucky guess. Wow. Huh. So Radiation Rabbit has the power to leap incredibly high. He can hear conversations through walls. He has the power to uh, light up entire cities by biting into the power grid. His list goes on and on. And, and on. Why, why are we talking about Radiation Rabbit today? Well, you're about to find out. Please welcome someone who knows <laughs> All right, come on in, come on in. Sure thing. Have a seat. Mr. Freedom. <laughs> Slide on in there. How's it going? I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, tell us who you are and uh, what you know. I'm Ross Freedom, and I design and write comic books. <laughs> Not just any comic book. You are the creator of the most incredible comic book character ever, Radiation Rabbit. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you like him. I like him. Like him. I don't know what I would do without him. Hey, listen, can you uh, give us any inside scoops about uh, further adventures of Radiation Rabbit? Well, at one point... Or, or, or how does Radiation Rabbit overcome his arch nemesis, the well, hawk? Well, if you would... Or will Radiation Rabbit ever find his mysteriously disappeared lab partner, Georgina Frankincense? Well, it's... Or will he have a completely different adventure, Radiation well, Rabbit? I don't really... I gotta I, I, know! Okay, I think he's trying to tell you, John.
I think you're going to be really excited about this. <laughs> Radiation Rabbit mm -hmm. is going to, <laughs> once and for all, <laughs> become <laughs> Robot Rabbit. Hmm? Dr. Jack Velveteen finds a cure for his radiation and chooses to retire from crime fighting in an assisted living community for former superheroes in Sarasota. <laughs> he just moves to Sarasota? <laughs> Yes, but while there, he teams up with former crime-fighting cohort, the Unmeltable Snowman, and they create Robot Rabbit in an impromptu lab they made in the rec center. Robot Rabbit is it's just a robot? Well, he's not just a robot. He's a rabbit robot. So no more radiation rabbit? Nope. But I really think you'll love Robot Rabbit. Huh. I've read Radiation Rabbit my whole life. How could you do this? I felt like it was time to create something different. Nuclear mutants are old news. Artificial intelligence is really the wave of the future. It's the kind of change the comic needed. But I don't like change! Oh, it'd be a little different, but... You'll adjust to the I don't like different things. Things should be the same. Always, always, always. Oh, no. <laughs> the bunny. Is he always? No, he's fine. He's fine. He, this happens at least twice a week. So, uh, thanks uh, for coming on the show. Mm. All righty then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, gents. Hey, Kellen. Oh, wow. Are you Radiation Rabbit? Yeah. One of my absolute favorites. Yeah, mine too. Aw, why are you so down? He just met the creator. You got to meet Ross Freedom? Yeah. Was it incredible? Not really. He's changing Radiation Rabbit into something different. Oh man, that's disappointing. And also a little exciting. No, Kellen, it's a mockery. You got a story for us today, Kellen? I sure do. And you can find this story in the book of Luke. And here to help me tell it are my kid friends with another edition of... A religious leader came up to Jesus and asked him a question. Teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? Hmm? Jesus asked him, what is written in the law? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. Oh, and uh, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus told him he should do that. He should love God and love his neighbor. But the man wanted to make himself look good. So he asked another question. And who is my neighbor? Hmm? That's when Jesus told this story. Someone was traveling on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. I'm walking and I'm walking on this here road from Jerusalem to Jericho keeping an eye out for robbers. Ah, what? Who are you? How did you get, what? How, how did you do, ah, please, ow, that hurts. Oh, goodness, ah, my head, oh, my hand. Ah. Robbers attacked the traveler. He was hurt so bad, he was almost dead. I said he was almost dead. Oh, right, uh. <laughs> Better. Thanks. 
As he lay there, almost dead, a priest happened to be walking down the road. Help me. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Um, disgusting. Here, let's just... Ah, that's better. The priest walked by on the other side of the road without helping. Then a Levite came by, someone else who worked in God's temple. And I'm walking, and I'm walking. Okay, wow. Ew, whoa. Okay, <laughs> no. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> the Levite walked by without helping too. Everything seemed kind of hopeless. Well, then a Samaritan came by. To the people Jesus was talking to, a Samaritan was considered to be an outcast. They were strange, different. They were enemies even. Would the Samaritan help? Help me. They got you good. Here, let's clean these wounds. What's that? It smells like olive oil and wine? That's how the story goes. I guess they were all out of hydrogen peroxide in Samaria. Huh. Here, let me put you on my donkey. And I'll take you to an inn. Where you can get some rest. Can I help you? Yes, my friend here has been badly injured. I need to go for the day. Here's one silver coin. Another one silver coin to make two. Take care of him. And if it costs any more than that, I'll pay you any extra when I get back. But of course, continental breakfast lasts until 10 a.m. Coffee and tea are complimentary. Help yourself. Thanks. When Jesus finished the story, he asked the religious leaders, which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man that was attacked by the robbers? The one who felt sorry for him? And Jesus told him, go and do as he did. The end. Wow, amazing job, kids, thanks. Anytime. Sure thing. My no pleasure. Problem. All right, I'll see, see you guys ya. later. Bye-bye. Farewell. Great story. Yeah, sounds like Jesus really surprised them with that ending. Yeah, Jesus did that a lot. The priest and the Levite seemed like they were the people that should help, but they didn't. It was the Samaritan who was different that actually was the good neighbor. I think the story teaches us that you can show kindness to anyone, even someone, and maybe even especially someone that is different from you. Thanks a lot, Kellen. Yeah, thanks. No problem. I'll see you all next time. Later. You know, Brandon, it's easy to be kind to people who are the same as us or people we're used to. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit harder to be kind to people who are different, like Robot Rabbit. Uh, maybe I should give him a chance. <laughs> OK. But you know Robot Rabbit isn't a real person. It's just a character in a comic book, right? <laughs> Reveal the question. How can you be kind to people who are different from you? I don't get along with my pet gerbil, Frank. He's really different from me. Maybe I can clean his cage more often. Not a person. Oh, well, then I don't get along with my second grade teacher, Mrs. Mabe. You keep in touch with your second grade teacher? Yeah, we're friends on the internet. Oh. She always posts cat memes, and I just, I'm not really a cat person. Okay, well, most of us know people who are different than we are. What are some ways you can be kind to those people? Talk about it together. I guess I'm not really a gerbil person either. <laughs> we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Goodbye. Yeah,